So, you've gotten yourself thrown into a deal, but you don't feel like waiting out your time. So today I'm going to show you how you can escape, clear your crime stat, and also get a ship to get off the planet and back into freedom. We're going to be trying to get out of the prison today. There are many ways out. You can wait out your timer, or you can go and work in the mine, do various jobs. And while that's probably the fastest way out, that's not what we're going to do today. We're going to pose ourselves a little challenge, and we're going to try to escape. The first thing you want to do is you want actually to head into the mines. We're not going down there to mine, we're going down there to pick up a mission. The mines are basically divided into three different tunnels. One, two, and three. They will be labeled when you enter. And from there, the tunnels are divided into what's called depths, where each depth is a room with multiple tunnels leading out of it. However, only one tunnel will lead you into the next depth, and only one tunnel will lead you back. You can see these tunnels by the numbers over the tunnel. So if you are in depth one, that's the first one you enter, you will see a tunnel with a number two over it. That means that's the one leading you into the second depth. And you're just going to keep going deeper and deeper and deeper into the mine. Keep an eye on the uh, icons up here in the upper right hand corner. As you move deeper and deeper, eventually you will get out of range of the comms array. And when you get out of range of the comms array, that's when people on the outside can begin to contact you. If you wait around out here, it can be anywhere from, well, almost instant to sometimes you might have to wait 10-15 minutes. But eventually a mission will spawn called Neat and Out. This mission is located under private missions. And if you pick this up, that's the mission you need in order to successfully escape out of the prison. Once you got the mission, we're done in the tunnels and we can begin to head back out. But before you head all the way back into the main room, notice that there's a little office here on your way in. And at the end of that office, there's a screen. And on that screen, there will be four numbers. These numbers will vary. They will change. So you need to go and look them up in your specific play session and take a note of those four numbers that you can see because you're going to need them in a second. Run into the main room and you will have a quest marker for the big fan with a, with a few fo broken fan blade. Right next to that there is a plateau you can run up with these habitation modules in. And you can jump over the railing and land on a little ledge in front of the fan. In the middle of the fan you will see this keypad and here you're going to type in your four numbers that we saw before. That will stop the fan and you can jump through where the fan blades are broken. And this is when the difficult part begins. First, when you make it in, you'll be greeted with a room where there's a steep drop. Run around the uh, uh, the edge here in a counterclockwise motion, and you'll be getting into a cave. You just follow this cave. There is no side path or anything here, so you can't take a wrong turn. At the end, you will see a drop. Fall down. Don't worry. While the drop is rather long, the gravity on this moon is so low that you're just going to land at the bottom safely. From here, we're just going to follow the blue light, and this is a general tip as you're doing this, just follow the blue, always follow the blue. You'll get to a, a, um, an intersect or a T-junction, and you take a right. After the right, you jump over the rock, follow it around, around the route, and go straight after you turn with the route. Then you come into another T-junction, and then you take a left, and then into another T-junction where you go right, and then you can crawl up the, uh, the rocks, and you can continue forward into this next section and again now you're back with the roots where you can see again you're at the top of them see the blue jump across to the top and take the right hand tunnel again once again behind you there will be another ledge you can crawl up we see more blue plants plants telling us that we are on the right way at the end you crawl up and in here you have more crawling up then once you're up here turn around and behind you you will see a ledge you jump to that ledge turn around again and you see another ledge and you jump to that we go back to crawling up more rocks. And we see more blue plants. Once again, take a right. And we go down the narrow tunnel that takes us slightly downwards. It opens up further down. And as we get further and further along, we do slightly more climbing. After following this tunnel for a while and climbing quite a few rocks, you will get to an open room. You can see a ledge on the side. You just do a normal jump across here. You don't need to sprint for this one, you just do a normal run and jump, and then you turn 180, and behind you you will see another ledge. Here a sprinting jump is required. Follow this short path, and then you see a drop. Be careful with the drop here, again the gravity is low, if you run too fast here you're gonna go over the edge. Once you are um, uh, once you're here you can see another ledge just across, again normal jump. Now from here 
you can see that in the playthrough here, I have a pick up this data chip right across. And we can make this jump no problem. It may spawn in different locations. Yours may not be here. For me, it was in this location. But as I said, you can, my, yours might be in a different location. Here I recommend that you once again very carefully drop out over the edge to the little metal platform below. And from here, you should very easily be able to just jump across and land on the other side. And if you, like me, miss the jump and, and fall down, assuming you don't fall all the way down and die, well, don't worry, there's some uh, rocks that you can climb up um, right next to it. So you can crawl up those rocks, that gives you a, a good vantage point next to the blue plants again, where you can jump across and uh, give it another go. Once you successfully make it to the platform, we can open up the backpack and take the data chip. So now we're done here, where you can see again just across, we can see those rocks there that we uh, that we crawled up before, kind of forming a, a step ladder. Um, and that's your way out of here again. So jump over towards those rocks. Once you get back up on top, you'll be led into a tunnel, and there you will see there's another drop. You have to drop down this, this is your only way forward um, at this point. And dropping down here is going to send you pretty much back to the start. We can see those um, blue plants that we... Uh, that we saw at the very beginning. So now you're basically just tracking through the same section of the tunnel as we did last time. Once we're back in the big room, we again take the jump across, but this time, of course, we're not going for the body. We're just turning around and we're jumping across to the next platform, go to the middle platform, and then do another sprinting jump across here. And then once again, turn around behind you, you will see you need to do a small jump. It doesn't have to do a very far jump and you can crawl up once again, following the blue lights. Up here, you're going to be led into a tunnel where there's a slight little jump you need to go over first. And then you'll be uh, getting to the first part of these metal structures that we're going to be seeing quite a lot of. From here, you can jump right across to uh, another metal platform and then turn 180 and you can see you have this big metal like circle with uh, a large platform in the center. Jump to that and immediately after you land to your left, there will be rocks for you to go and climb. Climb all the way to the top until you can't go further and look back out over the open area. You'll see a metal platform here on the other side. You can sprint jump across. There's a convenient route sticking out that's going to prevent you from jumping too far. And we once again crawl up further. Once you make it to the top, there's a tunnel we are heading into. And here you take a right again and make a jump across the, um, the platform here as you were falling down. Uh, you can see blue plants, and then you come out to uh, to be greeted by a dead body next to a red chem light. You need to do another jump across here, up the platforms. Then you do you crawl up the rocks, and you come to this um, part of the metal structure where you again crawl up and walk right across. From this platform here, you will see this tube, and that tube will lead you in to a tunnel. Be careful with this tunnel as there is a turn and right after the turn there's a hole so don't run too fast here um, and be careful with that hole. More, um, more rocks to climb and we are now up to the level above where we again have to do a normal running jump across and uh, then immediately continue across to the next section. We drop down the ledge here and just follow the tunnel. This is a one-way street here. And then here you do a sprinting jump all the way out to this plateau here. And after that plateau there, you can then do the final jump and you are out of the cave systems. And now we're heading into the actual structure itself. We get into the big room here, just do a careful drop down again on your left. Be careful not to fall down to those propellers. And then across here. Here you will see those laser beams going across. You don't want to touch those, so carefully walk up to the box next to it and then just run off the box, that should be safe. Right here you will see another screen with more numbers. Write down those numbers as you are going to need those in a second as we reach the surface. After you're done with the numbers, you can continue forward into these ventilation tubes. And once again, it's a very straightforward path. There are no wrong turns to take here, so just follow the path all the way to the end. At the end, they will find a place where you have to crouch and then jump up at the ledge here and then there's another drop down again be careful with the drop down here as you will have uh, again with the low gravity if you're too fast here you can't go with the railing the same way you go down these stairs don't go down too fast as you can end up actually sliding over those uh, that edge right there 
Okay, take a left and follow the uh, the edge of the hole around. And here you will see a probably what I find the hardest jump. You can see we have these stairs with a few steps missing. Don't sprint, just run normally, and then jump. You need to jump a little earlier than you think. Don't jump right at the edge, um, but jump like two steps before. Uh, before you reach the edge. You can see here we have another set of stairs coming up here in a minute. And I'll actually see what happens when you fail these, these jumps, because they are more difficult than they look when you're jumping up. So again, here you can see I jump way late and I don't get enough um, altitude to actually clear it, and then you fall down. In this case, it's not so bad as I just fall down one level, I can run up and try again. The other first one, if you fail that, well, you're all the way back to the start. So jump a little earlier, a few steps before, and you're good. Now, if we continue up the next set of stairs, those are intact, no need to worry, but the next set of stairs are not so intact. There's a big section missing, no way we're going to make it up those steps there, that's not going to happen. So instead, we're going to go around, and you'll see these boxes covered in some kind of black plastic, crawl up, and be careful not to fall down, jump to the top of this roof, and you can jump up on the red pipes, and you can run up the pipes instead of using the stairs. We are now on the surface, and we are almost out. We still have a crime stat, and we need a ship. So, follow again the edge of the hole around. We are going in a counterclockwise, counterclockwise direction, and we're looking for this yellow building we're going to be able to see here, in, right here in front of us now. That's the building that we are looking for. Once you get up to the building, on this side of the building, you will see a, a keypad, and you type in the first of the two codes that you have, and you click Accept. Here you get access to both open the door and the ramp. Now, in this case here, in this playthrough, the vehicle that's supposed to be in this hangar didn't spawn. Um, it did in the previous playthrough for me, so it's a bit random. They said they fixed this in, uh, in, in a future, in the, in the patch that's currently on the PTU, so it should be coming in the, in the future, and they fixed that. But for now at least, um, you have the bug where sometimes it doesn't spawn. But don't worry. You have another chance. If you keep the big building on your left, um, you will see there is another platform very similar to the one you've just been on. You can see the red pipes that are coming up there. Running over to that platform will give you a similar chance to spawn a, a vehicle as there is a building over there where you can use the second of your codes. Now, for me here, there was no vehicle, which means that I'm unfortunately forced to go out on foot. Uh, it's gonna mean I have quite a bit of a run, as we need to run, uh, I think, like, four kilometers. It's gonna take you around 15 minutes-ish to uh, to run this distance, so it's not too bad. But it would be a lot faster and a lot more convenient if we actually had the vehicle, especially as we do have some issues we need to deal with when we get to the next marker. As you're getting close, do be careful as NPCs can spawn. And here we can see our way out. There is a Cutlass Black sitting there. That's our ticket out. But we also need to first clear our crime stats so we're not just going to get picked up by the police as soon as we get there. Now, if we've had a vehicle, the vehicle that spawns will have a turret on the top. And if you are moving over to the, uh, the right-hand seat, the, the vehicle is left-hand driven. Um, but if you move over to the right-hand seat, then you can go and control the turret, and you can use that to take out the NPCs. Now, for me, the NPCs were spawning in the rear section of the um, of the destroyed um, Cutlass Black, but for you, they may be walking around, they may be scattered out across the place, so scope it out before you go close. If you have the vehicle, use that to either run them over or shoot them with the, with the gun on top. If you, like me, were unlucky and didn't get a vehicle, well, obviously we don't have a weapon, so what do you do? Well, there's a Cutlass Black sitting right there with a lot of guns on it, so you can go and use that. Here we can see the uh, the NPCs that are spotted, all standing nicely clumped together in the rear section of, uh, of that uh, Cutlass Black there. So we're just going to make our way inside, and notice as soon as you start up the ship, you'll begin to see inbound missiles. That is the, um, the prison center that's noticing a ship in its vicinity. You've been running over a bunch of hills on the way here, so you are safe for now. But when you take off, do not lift up very far. You need to stick and be very close to the ground, otherwise the missiles can hit you. Don't go up too high, stay close to the ground. And now you can simply just use the um, the Cutlass Black's guns to, to basically just clear out the sight of all the uh, the NPCs that, uh, that might be here set down the the vehicle again and power it off so that it cannot be seen by the missiles on the uh, on the prison center we can now make it back out 
And if we then begin to make it into the uh, into the forward section of the destroyed Cutlass Black, you will find this weird looking little terminal. And what you need to do is you need to open up your inventory and you're going to take that data chip that we retrieved earlier and you're going to drag it into your um, into your hand so that you're actually carrying the data chip. With the data chip in hand, we can go ahead and insert it into the machine and thereby clearing our crime stat. So we are no longer a wounded person as we just hacked away our crime stat. Now we can go and uh, loot the bodies. If, uh, if you wish to pick up some armor, just remember that you should not take off your helmet out here. Um, but you can go ahead and um, and loot some weapons. You might find some med pins or maybe other things. You can drag the bodies uh, into the uh, into the back of the uh, of the working cutlass black, as there will be an atmosphere in there. So if you need to swap around armor, if you want to get out of your prison suit, you can do that in there. But we're not quite out of the troubles yet, as you as I noticed before, there are missiles coming in. So you need to be um, need to be prepared for that. Make sure your speed limiter is set all the way to the top before you take off. Take off and go, basically just go space shuttle stages on this thing and just go straight up as fast as you possibly can. Full boost, running away, and if missiles begins to get too, too close, hit the H key on your keyboard to fire a decoy, trying to, um, to divert the missiles away from you. And while you do so, when you get up to like two, um, two to three kilometers, Try to just open up your quantum drive and find a planet or moon, anything, doesn't matter what it is. Anything that's a quantum marker is good and you quantum away. So there you go, crime status gone, you got yourself a ship, maybe you got yourself a little bit of weapons and armor, and we are out of prison and you're now a free man, so you can go and do whatever you want. Now this is quite challenging and it took me many attempts to get this right, um, but it is quite fun and actually something I would recommend you try if you do find yourself um, locked in prison. Even though it is quite a bit more time consuming than just working your way in the mine. That's it for today. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, I'll see you guys in space.